Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is Summer NAM 2017. We're in Nashville with Brad Paisley in the Fender booth. Great to see you. Great to see you, Mitch. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How's the show been so far? No, it's been great. It's fun to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And so you got something special you're uh, you're unveiling here at the show. I do. This is the Brad Paisley Roadworn Telly from Fender, and I'm thrilled to be uh, be making this for people. Yeah, right. So where'd the idea come from to do a signature guitar? Well, I mean. Uh, who wouldn't want to do that, right? Yeah, right. It's, it's really, uh, I'm so associated with the telly and I've grown up loving this instrument. And uh, the people at Fender, Fender has become this company that is so, it's run by guitar players, for guitar players. It's really a friendly place to be. I love their, their whole philosophy on, on, the, on the business right now. And, and when they approached and said, would you be willing to do something like this? I, I said, yeah. And there's, but there are a couple of the caveats that I really had were, I wanted this to be a touchable instrument, something that this isn't one of the guitars that when you walk in a music store, they're going to say, whoa, kid, like, don't touch that, ask for assistance. It's not like that. This is not that expensive, especially at a place like your your site. I mean, you, sure. can, you, you can get this for three figures, basically. We're talking about one of the best deals I've ever been a part of for people. And I love the idea of this being somebody's first guitar or maybe even last guitar. Nice. And I think it really can scratch both of those edges. Right, right. So was there a particular guitar you were basing this off of or were you just saying if I made a signature guitar it would be this? Yeah, we're. this is kind of a Frankenstein of a lot of my guitars that I love. I have a 63 Tele that's got this finish on it. I have a... Uh, I've got a 52 Tele that I love the neck shape of, um, and that's where the neck from this comes from. I've got the pickups from a 60s Tele. I, I play a 68 Paisley Tele a lot of the time. That has, this is basically a 60s pickup. The, the, the wood is this really wonderful combination of, it's basically Polonia, which is always light. It's got the same character characteristics of sort of ash or, uh, or those light tone woods that they made the early tellies with. And it also will be consistent. Like you, you're going to have, when you buy one of these, they're always going to be a certain weight. They're going to have a feel to them, and I love the way that they're dressing these these necks up, the frets, the nut. Every they, every one of these I picked up to play, and I've picked up a bunch so far. Feel the same, and they're and they're all set up just right. Right, right. Now you've got a spruce top and a spruce back on that Polonia. Yeah. Or is that right? There's something where, where about they... that that gives it a resonance. Mm -hmm. In addition, and they figured that out. They. They sort of, they figured out, oh, this is what it needs to be sort of, I, I guess, some some combination of wood that makes it the most resonant it can be. And it really does. I mean, it's just a, it'll ring for quite a while. And it's, it's the kind of thing that, at that weight, you would wonder if it's going to be dead or dull, and it's not. It's really alive. And maybe it's because of the same philosophy that the best Martin acoustics are made with spruce. Right. When you think about what that top does on a great acoustic guitar, <laughs> why wouldn't it work on a telly too? Yeah, sure. You know? So when you look at a guitar for yourself to play, are you looking for a particular weight? Are you looking for a particular resonance from the body? Or what, what is it that makes a guitar, that makes you say, this is my sometimes, guitar? Sometimes you can't quantify it. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's just, it just has something. But most of the guitars I love aren't sort of grossly overweight. They're sort of really, they're they're typically about seven pounds. I mean, some of the lightest, like I think my 52 Tele is about 7.2 pounds. Um, I've got the one that has been refinished to this color, that's a 63, is about 6.8 pounds. And some of those 60s and 50s Tele's were pretty light. And, uh, and then there's the neck shape. Your hand has to feel something, a connection here. And uh, obviously, there's ways that work better than others for, and, and maybe this isn't the neck shape for everybody, but I don't know. I mean, if you put, go ahead and put your hand there, because it, it is a- Kind of a V to it, it a little bit. a little bit of a V, and I've said all along, that's what your hand does. It yeah, does this, sure. and it's that shape right there. Sure. Right there. Sure. Do you look for particular frets? Are you a big fret guy, a small fret guy? These are 6105s, I think, which are- Okay, so kind of tall and narrow. And I could be like. wrong, I think that's what they are, but yeah, if yeah. you feel that, they're, they're bigger than a vintage fret, but, yeah, certainly. but not large. Right, right, and you like a vintage car up to the fingerboard? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. the radius is uh, pretty typical for something like a 50s telly. 
one of the things I've always heard in your playing and your recordings and, and live as well is, you know, Atelier can kind of get bright on that top end. And, yeah. And uh, you seem to really control that and get a really warm sound out of the telly. How do you do that? Well, I, I typically will use, you know, the, the, the amps I use most are British Voxes uh, or Dr. Z EL84 based cathode bias amps. They have a tendency, like I don't use a compressor pedal all that often. They have a tendency to grab that, and if you set them right, you know, it's like John Jorgensen and I have always talked, it's like your treble is down, your treble and bass are pointing at each other on, when you set a top boost AC30 right. or anything like it the right way. Because they're sort of like, you want that treble down and that bass up. And I think I think it's all in what you do with that. And then I play, I play pretty loud, so it's squashing the the, the speakers are Alnico. The 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 tubes in that cathode bias sort of class A configuration are they're tugging on each other, and there's a real compression happening, and that's a pleasant thing. And then then you you know you go through things like when Dr. Z builds me an amp. We always talk about that. That high end thing is where you really have to have some magic. And you've, we've all heard amps that didn't get that right. And it's pretty, it's pretty wonderful to uh, to hear an amp like. And, and I've always thought these Viber Kings have it too. That they they've got all the treble you want on tap, but there's not. It's not an unpleasant thing. And tube amps are good at that. Right, right. Do you run the tone control down on the guitar to to smooth nope. that at all? Run. I almost always run tone control wide like right now it's wide open. So how much do the pickups factor into that then? Do you have a, a darker bridge pickup or brighter neck pickup or how do you set that up? Yeah, I, I think one of the things about the bridge pickup that I like, people sort of figured out, and I, I would I'd love to know what it, what the, the man that designs the pickups has to say about this, but it feels stratty. Like if you listen, it's an... got a little bit of that telly kind of honk to it but it's it's got a strattiness and I, I think everybody kind of figured out oh strats have that figured out and they're making telly neck pickups these days that, that sort of steal a little bit from that mentality right and then uh, the bridge pickup it's probably it's not a high output thing at all I, I find though that like with the amps that I use when I, I lean towards these British designs if you if you play a 10k like broadcaster really thick pickup it's just going to be it's going to just destroy it it's going to hit that amp too hard and you're not going to have a magic sort of give and take it's just going to be hit right and so I, I, you know, 8K is about the hottest, and this one is an 8. I, I, I hear is around 8K, so okay, okay, okay. it's one of the hotter pickups I use. But I think something about the light body on these calls for that because you need to, you know, pickups and wood. There's a give and take there. Sure, sure, and the bridge factors into that as well. You've got a vintage style bridge. On yeah, the, which on I the really like pieces. the sound of, and the brass takes away a little bit. Like steel saddles have a, a snap to them. It's a little brighter, right. I find, and brass is a little more musical. So, right. I have guitars with steel saddles, but they—they're the right, you know, they're not as light as this, and it works a little bit better on something that's heavy, possibly. Right. All these things went in to basically make what is, I think, a magic thing together. Right, it's kind of an amalgam of all those features brought together. Absolutely. Any one of them and just stuck it in another guitar wouldn't work that way. Yeah, totally. I've—I've I've tried. I tried other pickups in one of these early prototypes, and. Um, even played shows with them that way. It was never perfect though. And it's not until they brought me there, and I even tried, you know, aftermarket stuff. I tried some some various brands of, of pickups that you would buy that are replacement pickups. Right. Just to see if I liked any of them. And it, I went back to the one they made for this. When they finally got this right, it's hard to beat. Nice, nice. Well, we're so excited. We can't wait to get this in the hands of our customers. I can't wait to get one back and check it out. I can't. Awesome. I can't wait. Absolutely. I can't wait to see somebody playing this. That uh, you know, that's not not doing it for promotional reasons. <laughs> I, I really am excited to see somebody that bought one of these and they're out there and they're right, right. And, and I think it's so cool, with, cool that you brought it in at a great price too. That's important to me. I think that uh, it's, you know, I, I I think about the people that I really want to inspire and. Um, I, I hope there are wealthy doctors and lawyers that want to buy my guitars, but 
I, I, I'm really interested actually in, like I said, in the sort of working class folks that, that really play music to get that release from whatever it is they're doing, and, and I'm excited to see somebody doing that. That's so awesome. Brad, thanks so much for your time today. Absolutely. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very and, much. Uh, congratulations on the guitar. I think it's really awesome. Have a great time in Nashville. Right on. Thank you for joining me at Summer Nam 2017. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.